come on yeah. <laughs> yeah i know always when you're on a meeting or on a yeah. recorded call it happens yeah huh. um so i know you were going to talk to us about young scotland's got talent and how that's a big event that would normally take place in person yeah. but now that's something that's going to take place um virtually yeah well, the I'll just tell you about about young Scotland's got talent. Um, I know that you know about that, but like people watching this might not heard of young Scotland's got talent and, and and stuff like that. And not to get mixed up with Britain's got talent, and um, it's a completely different kind of like event, and that's not a competition. It's that kind of like showcase event. So young Scotland's got talent's been running for for. Oh, uh, God knows how long, uh, a few years anyway, and um, I've been involved in the studio and they go to different parts of Scotland. So, for instance, when they launched uh, Young Scotland State Talent, I was at Hamden Park in Glasgow, and then from then, then on they went to Aberdeen, Inverness, and, you know, and it seemed that people with disabil uh, learning disabilities or or with people with autism and to to kind of like celebrate kind of like their jobs. So what happens at Young Scotland's Get Talent is it turns from like half ten till half two say and they have like a fashion show. But the way I put it over is like a fashion show we are different, you know. Um so people what happens is people with run this by the case you know, come to the talent show with a watch uniform on and they walk up and get in the catwalk uh, to model like the watch uniform and there's a there's a comp here um, and usually ask them questions about their job. Um, so yeah, it's it's a really kind of like fun day and obviously they have like different workshops as well. Um, and yeah, you're right, Rabbi, there was meant to be two this year. I think there was meant to be one back in June, and that was in Paisley, I think it was, and they had another one coming up. But unfortunately, as you say, everybody's in lockdown. But myself and, well, yourself at the beginning, and uh, some someone else now at the Scottish Commission for Learning Disability case called Linda Mitchell, has been involved in like, the planning process. And I'm, I've got the lucky job, or people's lucky enough, I don't know, or maybe I'm lucky to speak to me, because on the day that I'm comparing the event, along with uh, a woman that used to work with various interaction called um, Kathleen Harrow. So basically what I'm doing a bit at the moment is I'm in, interviewing people about their job, and on the day I will go live, uh, I will be um, played, but not um, live, because as you can imagine, the like, over technology, it's wonderful, it works, but if it doesn't work, it can be a real nightmare. So we're recording that bit, and then the rest of it is meant to be live on the day. So it happens on the... 29th is that right Levy or should I well, well I was just gonna say Michael tell us when it happens yeah <laughs> or I can yeah. tell <laughs> yeah it's, it's Wednesday the 29th of July from 10 30 to 12. Um, yeah yeah it just goes well because I've not got everything here that I you know so uh, I know it's shocking and um, but if you want more information about that I think there's two ways and you can keep me right here Levy um, you can email SLD or you can email Values Interacts in Scotland. Um, and I'm not sure of the email addresses because, and, and you can tell what I've prepared for this very well to get. Um, but I don't know if you know of any of the email addresses, Libby, or? So you can visit Young Scotland's Got Talent on Facebook if you just search at Young Scotland's Got Talent. Um, all one word and I believe the best way probably to get in touch is via the Facebook page um, or you can get in touch with Vias Values Into Action Scotland by visiting their website 
um, or giving them a phone and you can just find their details um, or just by searching online. So, yeah, yeah. So what point about, point about staying to was um, it's happening, as you can imagine, on Zoom and Zoom can only take up to 100 people. So places are limited because in kind of normal terms, we would be holding a bigger audience, well, bigger than a, well, a hungry spig, but you know what I mean, more, more than a hungry people. So if you want to go in, you can email Facebook, um, you can email SLD or, or Valley's Interaction. So that's happening on, on the 29th of July. And then, but if you miss the whole event, don't worry, because I think they're putting it on uh, YouTube. Um, where they've set up a YouTube channel, I think, hopefully, and they, they'll put the think they they put the whole program of events on there as well. So it's shaping up to be a, a good day. So I'm looking forward to it. That be enough. Yeah. No, I think it'll be fun. Um, yeah. Any like it's just exciting to to kind of go go to an event at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and what another thing as well, and uh, I just remember that young Scotland Good Talent has a theme this year. So we're having a theme about people with disabilities uh, working on the front line. And I've, and I've used a lot of people that's working in the Queen Elizabeth Hospital at the moment as well. So that was good to see. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that that's it. So you've got the details now. So um, hope to see you on the on the day. Um, but also, it's important that you go onto these websites because you've got to register to 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 come to the event on the 29th. And I hope you can come along a bit as well and, and see us all. Yeah, no, I'm sure I'll be um, supporting in some way. So yeah, that that sounds good. Um, yeah, because lots of things are changing, aren't they? Like that said about it not being nice to go to events. Like since we were last kind of um, live on the podcast, things have been have moved quite quickly. Um, well, it's not yeah. felt, but um, yeah. So that in I know in Scotland we're quite a bit behind England um, and Northern Ireland, but um, things have changed and at SLD we've been trying to produce up-to-date easy read guidance um, on those kind of things so I think probably most people will know by now that we've, we're in obviously we're in phase two of lockdown and we're moving towards phase three quite mm. quickly um, and that means that we can do things like meet other households um, outside and you can form households with say if you've got a partner who you don't live with or um you've got it's just you and a child under 18 you can form a household with with other people um so that's a big step forward to where we were um, and we can also travel a bit further now um, than the five miles which is good um but the big thing i suppose in terms of disability is is the face mask Mm, yeah, um, because this is something that some people might not know, but it's compulsory in Scotland now to mm. wear a face covering um, when you go into a shop or when you use public transport. Um, and this, on the face of it, I think is you know it's a really important thing to do because when you put on a face covering, you're protecting other people, not mm. yourself. If we all wear them, we're, we're protecting each other. But it's got implications if you've got, um, say, quite a severe learning disability and it's quite distressing to put on a face mask um, or a face covering, I should say. And um, or you maybe it's a mental health issue or a physical health, a medical condition where you can't wear one. Or like you shared on Twitter, Michael, the other day about um, if you are a British sign language user and mm -hmm or a lip reader and you can't obviously see people, people's mouths and like understand what people are saying if they're covering their mouth. So there's a lot of, um, there's exceptions. So I think it's important mm. if you see somebody in the shops um, or on a train not wearing a mask or a face covering to kind of just remember that, you know, that um, 
people have reasons for, for not doing that? Mm. I think uh, um, the yeah the, the reason why I'm, I I done that kind of vlog was to maybe explain about um, what is a face mask as well, but there's also a company in Edinburgh and um, and I, I should have got the information. I'm that organised to get about the there's a company made um, been about for years. But they're specifically making face masks for um, uh, yeah face masks for um, people with um, yeah breathing difficulties and and specifically autism as well, but also for people with deaf and can't hear, um, but they can lip read. So basically, what you've got is if I can show you now, um, so they've got the a mask, but. At, at the middle of it, there's a hole, well, a, a hole, and that's where your mouth is, and people can still see what you're saying, because if you cover the whole mask up, that you won't be able to, I mean, if I was going up to you, that way you, you would get, you know, so, uh, and stuff like that, and, but there's a lot of fear about it as well, and, um, but yeah, it's man mandatory now in Scotland and, and stuff. And um, I mean, I, I mean personally, like I've never worn one before, but and I was a bit apprehensive about doing that a few weeks ago. Uh, but now it's like I've got to wear one. And I suppose like if you, you know, as Mick the said, like if you wear one for the first time, you might feel a bit awkward, but if you think about like the doctors and the dentists and all that, they they wear that they wear that every day. Whereas we've been asked to wear it hopefully for a short space of time or a few months. Yeah, and I think well, just a note on the the masks for people who uh, speak BSL is that they do have like a plastic screen where the hole is, so it's not just a hole. Um, just in case anyone's <laughs> yeah, yeah. worried about Maybe it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I never explained it. Like, uh, yeah, keep me right. <laughs> Disclaimer. Um, but no, I think it's really important for people who can, you know, wear masks like you and me to do it to protect people even more who can't, you know. And um, But I agree with you. It is quite, it's a weird thing to do. And I think I've been wearing one for quite a few weeks now. And I've found that sometimes people react weirdly to me when I'm wearing a mask or mm. um I think probably part of the, the reason is that the masks I have are quite eccentric oh, <laughs> I've got a camo one like I've got a military one and like a paisley pattern one um, <laughs> and my neighbor very kindly from upstairs made me some masks as well which uh, I can I can show you my mask collection actually that yeah that was good are we exclusive on, on the I know. Uh, so these are my neighbour's mum very kindly. Oh, that's a nice one, yeah. So they're reversible ones. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, you can move them anyway, yeah. So that's the that's yeah. a slightly military one. Um, and then there's kind of a nice. So all of those oh, nice. I got on Etsy, the crafting website, mm. apart from the ones which my neighbour made. So. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think it is. It's it can be a bit intimidating putting one on. People behave weirdly towards you. But the important thing to say is, I think if you don't have a reason not to wear one, then um, and I think they are making cards. Some of the charities that we work with are making cards that people can carry, which says, "I'm not wearing a mask because," oh, um, okay. which is quite useful because I think now the thing is the police can find you if you're not yeah. wearing a mask. Yeah, um, it's kind of made, uh, they, they've kind of put it in law now in, in Scotland uh, a few weeks ago before they moved into faith, they that, like, yeah, the police can stop and find you, or maybe they can ask you questions about why you're not wearing it and, you know, give you a, give you a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, so it's just, it's just being aware of that. Um, and... Yeah, but I think, you know, with, I think it's from the 15th of July as well, that um, 
things like beer gardens and things are going to start opening up in Scotland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and hairdressers and places like that. So I think it'll be a big it'll start to feel quite strange for us because it's almost like life starting again. You know, it was funny. I was watching the first minister last week, I think it was, and she was explaining to the MPs and all that what's going to happen in Free Free. And as soon as she mentioned about, I don't know if you saw this, Robbie, but the first time I've heard in Parliament ever, um, when she heard, when she said about the hair process is opening, all the MPs, no, no matter if you are SNP, Labour, Conservatives, but they're all Green Party, Liberal Democrats, they were all given a big round of applause because I think everybody was missing that, you know. I certainly am, yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> through one reason or another, I haven't actually had my hair cut since December. <laughs> so yeah. it's a mess, like it's a proper mess. And I nearly thought about, you know, cutting it myself a few months ago but then I was like you've waited this long you might as well just um just wait, wait that longer <laughs> but I think I'm gonna have to book quite a far in advance and I think the wait it could still be another few months until I actually get get into the hairdressers that I like <laughs> I know that um, we've got a family friend and um, he owns a hairdresser in Barhead but they've been well stocked up with PPE and face masks and uh, they've been in like, uh, a few months ago kind of like um, and that they're making it into kind of like separate booths you know where you sit and do your hair mm. all that kind of stuff. They, they, they put up like plastic shooting and to divide the bag up you know and yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, but I also think it's a good idea that the hairdressers has got masks made, but on the front of it, it's got the name of the hairdressers. So I suppose it's a good one for a marketing kind of tool as well. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it might be the case that, you know, in, in years to come at conferences, you know, you get your like, your wee kind of phone stand type things, which I've got here. <laughs> Um, it might be that you get um, a mask with the company's mm -hmm. branding on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what Halloween's going to look like this year, but I think there'll be millions of people going to be with masks on. And... I don't think we need Halloween this year. We've had enough. No. We've, it seems um, yeah, enough. yeah, yeah. That's a good point, actually. <laughs> I don't like Halloween, but that's a different one for a different podcast, I think. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the other thing, isn't it? Um, like this year, you know, I was sat the other day chatting to somebody and I was thinking, gosh, this year's just gone. Like it's just gone like that because yeah, half the year really has been been at home. So it's yeah, um, exactly. weird. It's really yeah. weird. Um, and it's especially, it's weird for me because it's the last year of my 20s. So. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, like, and I can't eat, I can't go out and do it. So basically, they didn't know how old the is, you, you know now. You know now, um, yeah. You know, I feel a bit like an old man, but never mind. Um, and, and I'll, so, I'll not ask you your age, Michael. No, no, 21 plus that. Um, so I know uh, festival is moving online this year that I'm involved in. It's like the year one festival. SLD was heavily, heavily in, well, not so much involved in that last year, they were more in, involved in the IACID kind of conference and that stands for, uh, and the... <laughs> the International Association um, for the Study of deve Developmental, of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, I think, I've said that wrong, but IACID, yeah. And this year, am I, am I right in saying this year, the conference was meant to be in India, I think? Um, um, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. obviously it's not going to happen. But anyway, so this festival that I'm going to speak about is connected to the IASA conference in the Ring of it way, and it's called the We Are One Festival. 
and now Levy and some of our colleagues from SLT came up last year to the event and it was a good night. Um, so good night. it was over two days playing in the Saturday and then by the Sunday I was absolutely shattered um, for a good Scottish word shattered. Um, and the, the We Are One Festival is aimed at, well I suppose it's aimed at everybody but Specifically in that people of learning disabilities, LGBT, um, you know, different kind of like diverse backgrounds, like coming together and celebrating, uh, sin, sin, say that again, citizenship. So on the Saturday, because that was the main event, on the Saturday we had like music, we had um, drama, we had workshops we have people speaking about their own experiences whether that's to give us mental health or disabilities or we had people that are speaking about the, the different cultures that that they stay in because people came from all over the world to to the conference and the schedule on for the we are one festival however as you can imagine uh, with a running theme along this one that like ever, ever since online this year so um, the, the We Are One Festival was supposed to happen in September and it's still going to happen but the only difference is it's online and it's going to be running for three days from the, uh, um, the, the 14th of September to the 19th of September. Um, we haven't really got all the details um could have just speaking to different people that who want to be involved in it and that the plan is to have it on uh, different days but also having different themes alongside that day as well and um, so but i can tell you that there's going to be music there there's going to be comedy there's going to be people speaking about the experiences as i say and also we during lockdown, it's they it's gave the the kind of we are one kind of team to team team up with this uh, organisation um, called No La um, No Labels No Walls, um, and it's an international festival. Um, so we're speaking to people from Can Canada and we're speaking to Norway uh, as well. They put on a conference every kind of year and that runs with the same kind of themes as a We Are One Festival. So we're hoping to team up with them. So hopefully the next time that we do a podcast, um, I'll be able to give you some more information in the week as well. But it's funny when I'm going to the meetings. At the, oops. Um, uh, Excuse me. <laughs> It's funny when I'm going to the meetings with people in America because when we have meetings here at five o'clock in the day, but over there it's nine o'clock in the morning. So that's like funny to see. Yeah. And you forget like the time difference as well. Um right. so yeah, so the we are one festival. Um we're on we're in the middle of building the website, but we're on Facebook as well. So if you just look for the We Are One Festival and you'll find us on there. But yeah, so so that's the, the We Are One Festival in September. Sounds good, yeah. No, I do remember what a good time it was last summer. Um, because we'd had that huge, you know, I acid conference and we'd welcomed people to Glasgow from all over the world. We'd had ambassadors with learning disabilities at the conference for the first time. You and I had done some yeah. pop in of the of the delegation. And it was just such a celebratory kind of experience. So yeah, it does it. That's the difference this year, isn't it? It's just you, yeah. that sort of celebratory thing you don't get as much. But I mean, yeah, we try yeah. our best online. Yeah, and it's weird to think that. And I know I've, I've, I've said this to you a lot in the past couple of weeks, but I can't believe that the IASA conference was based in SECC, and now it's a kind of like hospital. So. You wouldn't imagine a year ago that we would be in this kind mm. of situation. You really wouldn't, no. Hopefully we're um we're at 
coming out of the other end. But I think, as we've been saying, life getting back to normal is is a long term yeah. thing, really. Yeah. Um, so, but you've got news on our kind of book. Um, yeah. yeah. So, well, I haven't written a book, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've not been that productive over lockdown. I'm better um, for the tea, do <laughs> What it is, actually, is this, a lot of people probably heard of this book. It's called Made Possible um, by Saba, well, it's edited by Saba Salman. So she is a journalist and her sister Rana has a learning disability. Mm. And so she wanted to collate a kind of anthology, if you like, of stories told in people's own words from people with a learning disability about what they've done with their life, um, what their kind of motivations have been, what their challenges have been, um, and just really to say, look, what we've done and what we can do um, and what, you know, possibly might have been denied to us if we, if society hadn't, um, you know, been more supportive of us than it was, you know, say 50 years ago or however long ago. Mm. Um, so it's a really like powerful, um, like st really powerful collection of stories. Um, I'm, as you can see, I'm almost finished. Um, oh, okay, yeah. There's a couple of people in here who you probably have heard of. One of them is a woman called Lizzie Emma, um, and she's a musician. Um, and she was working with um, this organisation. I'm trying to find the name of them. So basically this organisation has kind of enabled her to, like, Heart and Soul, that's the name, yeah. has enabled her to pursue a music career. And she's had like several successful records and um, she's been on like TV and um, I was actually checking her out on YouTube. She's got like a really laid back kind of vibe. But oh, yeah. And there is a swimmer called Dan Pepper um, who competed at the Paralympics. And it was interesting as well because I didn't know that apparently he said in his section that in 2000, at the Paralympics, a Spanish basketball team competed and they pretended to have a learning disability and they got found out. And then ah, the Paralympic well, Committee... Yeah, I never knew that. No, the Paralympic Committee then banned all athletes with learning disabilities from international competitions, no. which just seems crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know about that. And 2000 wasn't that long ago you know oh, yeah. um so yeah i so I'm, I'm learning new things as well um the sarah gordy as well who's the actress on call the midwife all oh, right okay yeah yeah okay, yeah and she got awarded an mbe um mm. was it last year i think or the year before i think it was last year yeah uh yeah and then there's just like really great stories so there's um a guy sean who um got a job at this organization organization called change and has kind of gone all over the world um campaigning for like you know rights for people with, with learning disabilities sean webster mbe so he's also got an mbe okay. um, and who else was i mean to be honest i can't pick anyone out because the stories were just so um, mm -hmm. you know so interesting it's very good to see that there's a book with lots of people with learning disabilities you know like contributing to it in, in different ways whether they're a Paralympian or a musician or stuff yeah but it's just a shame that most of these people that we, we've talked about before I haven't heard of these people before and like I suppose um, maybe this is not a conversation for the now, but I suppose it's quite sad to, to see that there's lots of people out there doing brilliant work, but they're not kind of household names, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 
And, you know, because as soon as I read each chapter of the book, I followed the person on Twitter <laughs> and like yeah. I thought, you know, I want to keep up to date. But yeah, like, why aren't people more in the public sphere? Yeah. Um, it's a bit like what you and I have talked about before. Like, you know, a lot of the time, if you have a disability of some type, that's kind of the tag that society puts yeah. on you. You wrote the own like news reporters and stuff only speak to you on disability issues or, um, you know, and you, you get like typecast almost. Yeah. Whereas the people in this book, the sort of the least interesting thing is that they've got a learning disability because I'm it, it's more interesting like what they've done with their life and that's really how it should yeah. be um, yeah 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 because like I mean you've not got a learning disability Libby, so nobody would label you the only label you would get is a female mm -hmm. you know what I mean but as for me that people would label me as a man, a, a, a man, a boy. So a boy, I would prefer to be called a boy because I'm not a man yet, even though I'm 36. Um, but a, a man with a disability. So like, I've got like two labels, if you know what I mean. And whereas nobody should have any labels and you know they like put people. In, I always speak about labels in boxes as well because it's like. You know, then Libby's not got a disability, we'll put her over there, but Michael has, we'll put him in, in, in a special room with, with special people to do special things, <laughs> you know, and like these special things are the same as what you're doing, but they're not called special things, they're just called, you know, stuff, like mm. friends in school, you know. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, I mean, that's why, and that's a quite an interesting debate and like, topic. Maybe we we should speak about that uh, further down the line, like, because I mean, I don't know about you, but certainly you could get a whole podcast out of it. Yeah, no, you you definitely could. How um, yeah, sometimes people label um people labeling people think it's a helpful thing to do think it's you know oh you need extra support so I'm gonna have the people need to know that you need this but then it becomes a barrier doesn't it because it becomes yeah. a barrier a lot of the people in this book say that they say I just you know I, I have normal normal friends yeah, <laughs> Not yeah, anyone's yeah, normal, yeah. But, you know like and a lot of them speak about when they were younger and that they were maybe separated from um mainstream like schooling or whatever and that had you know that's in a way they enjoyed it sometimes but it did hold them back a little bit because um because yeah they, they didn't one of the guys in here says about you don't develop you're not given the same opportunity to develop like social skills if you're just kind of made to be with like a support worker all the time or yeah. you, you don't get to interact with your peers as much and that can yeah. hold you back um but yeah no there's some really like I want to say powerful stories but I don't want to I don't want to sound make that sound patronizing that these are stories like no, I, I, I think yeah you know, right regardless yeah. of whether you've got dis whether these people have got disability you know I mean I think it is maybe powerful in a way again that goes back to young Scotland's get talent in fact it ties in with the book in a, in a kind of way because you hear some stories that you know people's get this assumption because they I've got like a physical disability my you know my disability is cerebral palsy I'm quite open about my disability and I've told you about that before love it like and like you wouldn't imagine you know, like I do a hell of a lot of things that you know that I do that way because I'm very kind of like active on, on kind of like social media to active sometimes. But when people get this assumption that oh Michael's got a disability, so he can't do what he does, you know. But um, yeah, but and did you say that that book's available on ebooks as well? Or? So I. Uh you can get it on Kindle. Yeah. It's actually published this year. Um, so it's 
pretty much hot off the press. I think it came out in February. Um, it's published by Unbound. Mm. Um, and you can get it on Amazon, obviously. <laughs> you can get everything on Amazon. Yeah. And you can get yeah, it on, yeah. Amazon. If you're feeling virtuous, you can get it on Waterstones. Um, yeah. When it's back open. Yeah. If it's I, back, I, I don't know if it's back open yet. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think it probably will open like in the coming weeks, but you, you can get it from the Waterstones website and you can yeah. get it from Amazon. You can, I think it's eight ninety nine the paperback, mm. um, but you can get like the Kindle edition is cheaper. I think that's about four ninety nine because I know obviously lots of people furloughed at the moment, lots of people out of work. So it's, you might think a book isn't something that you could yeah. miss spend yeah. money on so that's an important thing to, to say as well this i didn't pay for because one of my colleagues lent it to me um so i'm sure she'd be happy to lend it to you michael as well if you were uh, yeah <laughs> yeah, that, that's yeah. Gonna have to, yeah. <laughs> don't know when that will be but i'll, I'll see you before christmas anyway <laughs> yeah hopefully <laughs> um and you've got some news about people with learning disabilities um, being affected by um, the coronavirus. Yeah, so there's been, um, there was a report by the Scottish Government in 2013, I think it was, which said, which explored about people with learning disabilities being more susceptible to respiratory and like lung conditions um, and that can be particularly for people with um, quite profound uh, learning disabilities like tr if you have trouble swallowing um, and eating and things like that it can affect the, like, the bacteria that get into your lungs and things so that obviously if you're already susceptible to that it puts you at greater risk of, of complications from mm. getting coronavirus or COVID-19 so there's been a big push at the moment, both in England and in Scotland, to say, well, where's the data on, um, you know, the number of people who, with a learning disability who've sadly passed away due to coronavirus? Because mm. this is quite, um, it's an important data set to have. Mm. Um, because, you know, once you've got information, you can really assess this, the, the depth of the problem and the breadth of the problem and... and hopefully like work to understand why and, and try and do more things about it. So um, the Scottish Learning Disabilities Observatory announced that they're going to be undertaking some research into this. Oh, um, okay, yeah. So yes. Does so, that mean that um, they'll be finding out um, about how many people have died with the coronavirus that have a, a disability or autism or because that would be quite interesting to well it's not a subject that I, I would like to speak about but I would be quite interested in just like thinking that because we don't usually hear about that in the news no, well, that was the thing. Um, so there was a Daily Mail article talking about um, the Care Quality Commission in England and about how this was a big gap. And in the article, it referenced um, this, the Scottish Government report on respiratory lung disease. Um, and yeah, that that was kind of how it's been building for a while. There's been a lot of calls from various organisations, you know, in, including SCLD, to say, well, where is this data? We, we really kind of need to, to pull it together. So, yeah, they'll be looking at that. So it's the Scottish Learning Disabilities Observatory, the Scottish Government and the National Records of Scotland, who are doing a collaborative study into rates of COVID-19 infection and mortality rates for people with learning disabilities in Scotland. So, um. I imagine, you know, this is going to be quite a, it's an in-depth study, so it's going to take quite a few months, mm. but as soon as that has any results, obviously that will be shared via SCLD and um, we can obviously talk about it on the podcast yeah. as well. Yeah. But I think it's it's not a pleasant subject, but it's it's good that they've noticed the gap and that people are going to do something about it. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we're waiting for us to, to, 
to find out, especially because of the line of work that I'm in, but also the line of work that you're in as well. I've got kind of SLD and kind of, yeah, but I don't know what we can do with that information, but I suppose it's just publicised and, you, you know, and um, I mean, because you're kind of, you kind of do the same kind of job as me a wee bit. I mean, the, the small differences are on the way. Um, but, like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would be good to maybe, hopefully it comes out before the next one, the, the, the podcast will be doing, stuff like that, and, um, you know, speak about it in the next one, if that's, you know. Yeah. I, I, know it's, uh, I know it's not a nice subject, but it needs to be highlighted. Yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, this this is likely not to be the the, the only pandemic mm. that um, we experience. Well, we don't know. It, this could be a more frequent phenomenon. So, yeah, like if what we can learn from this can help people the next time, um, yeah. or even just help people's health and social care, um, mm. generally, it will be um, really beneficial. I think. Because information mm. is power, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, yeah. And that's the only way that, uh, you know, people goes on about numbers and all that. And I used to be, years ago, I digging, you know, but because I'm old enough and wiser now, don't laugh when I say wiser, because I'm never going to be wiser. Um, but I suppose like numbers and stats and all that kind of boring stuff, people would say that really helps people, like, us and people in the you know, like disability world understand different things as well, and also people with learning disabilities themselves. Yeah. Like, I mean, millions of other people in Scotland, but also all over the world. But obviously, by just speaking about Scotland, so yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thanks for joining us for the, the, the podcast. We'll be back next one for another episode. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, we are at uh, Bites Disability. And we're on Facebook. Just look for Disability Bites. And you can email us at uh, disabilitybites at gmail.com. Um, and you will find us on there. We're, we are kind of like fairly new podcast to to Scotland. This is the fourth one of the of the year, and we're hoping to do more. So spread the word, and if you've got any news about disability issues or topics that we could speak about, send us in, and uh, we'll we'll speak about them. So thanks, love it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'll speak to you soon. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.